welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host Jack and this is another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. What I'd like to talk to you about today was uh, a couple of videos ago I introduced you to our sponsor Green Screen Wizard and I showed you how easy it was to use Green Screen Wizard and a green screen to create some really nice effects by putting somebody over a different background. And that's a, a very nice way. It's very clean. You don't have to buy a lot of backdrops for your studio. You can just use uh, digital backgrounds. We can find those as I showed you in many different places. In this video tutorial, I want to introduce you to uh, Green Screen Wizards Sandwich Overlays. And I did actually talk to the uh, programmer Ken on the phone. Ken is actually a, a, a very much a photographer. Um, he's opening a new studio. Uh, congratulations to Ken. I hope the studio goes well. Maybe we'll get some pictures back from that. Uh, I'd like to see some of those, Ken. If you uh, want to take any shots of your studio, I, I always like to see what people are doing out there. What? So what are sandwich overlays and why are we going to talk about that today? Sandwich overlays are, if you go to greenscreenwizard.com, you can actually look at the sandwich overlays uh, collection. And I'm actually at the buy it now uh, page here. So, if you uh, take a look and say, uh, see the collections, these are what sandwich overlays are. And I'm going to show you how to use sandwich overlays in Photoshop Elements. Now, in order to do this properly, I'm going to first show you how to set up your Photoshop Elements to use these things uh, relatively easily and be able to find them very quickly. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Ken's website, especially if you already picked up Green Screen Wizard, and uh, if you have not yet picked it up, by all means, if you're shooting green screen or blue screen, this is definitely the program for you. So go to greenscreenwizard.com, and you can buy a copy, or go over to my website, jackstechcorner.com, you can pick up a copy there also. Now, what are sandwich overlays, and how do we use them? First, what you're going to do is go to Ken's website here, and you're going to buy this. It's $30 plus shipping. These are, are delivered to you on a DVD. And then you're going to, it's an it's a install file, just like a regular Windows setup file. You're going to install these onto your computer. Now, here's where the trick comes in, because I want to show you how to properly set these things up to get the easiest uh, use out of it, or ease of use. So let me open up my uh, my computer and we're going to show you where these get installed to when you install the overlays they're going to get installed to your C drive program files and then it's going to be green screen green screen wizard pro and they're going to be right here there's background overlays and foreground overlays and there's frame overlays what you want to do first of all that makes this a lot easier is to click the frame overlays hold your control key down click on background overlays and the foreground overlays then you're going to right click on those and you're going to select copy okay now what we did was we're just going to copy them from where they're sitting and we're going to put them to where we need them to be to make it easier to use in Photoshop elements so at this point Let's go back into My Documents and then open up your My Pictures folder. And you'll notice in here, um, and if you noticed before, I created a folder a while back called Background. This contains all of my backgrounds in here. And what I did at this point was when I opened Background, or you can call it Backgrounds, whatever you feel like, I just right clicked in here and I clicked Paste. Now what that gives me is this folder. Background overlays are in there foreground overlays are in there. I have one framed overlay in there as well as as well as the last overlay. So background, foreground, and framed overlays. That was the three that I brought over. Okay. Now they're in there. Now what we're going to do is when you open up your organizer, so let's go ahead and close this out. 
we'll minimize the website out of the way. When you bring up your organizer, what I want you to do is, if it doesn't pick them up automatically, go to File, Get Photos from Files and Folders. And then all you're going to do here is just navigate to your My Pictures folder, right? Then we're going to go down. And don't think it's complicated. If you think that was complicated, back up. Pause the video, stop it, start it over if you have to, or just back up a little bit. For my pictures, we're going to go to background. And then what I want you to do first is pick background overlays. You're going to select the first one, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and hold your shift key down and select that last one. Then click on get photos. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to put them in your organizer. Now, once we put them in your organizer, they're going to come up much like this. They're not going to be in an album yet. So, you have them there, they're ready to be put into an album. What I want you to do now is select the first one again, hold the shift key down, select the last one. There we go. Now we have them all selected. Now what you want to do is, if you created a folder like I told you in a couple of previous uh, videos called Backgrounds, just right click on that and go create a new album in Backgrounds Album. Now when you do that, all of those backgrounds are going to be in there and give it a name. If it's the foregrounds, you can call it foreground overlay. If it's the backgrounds, call it background overlays. All right. So that is our backgrounds. And you can also see down here, I'll show that our foregrounds overlay or OL. This is the foreground. Now, the way these work is, the reason it's called a sandwich overlay is because we have a background that we put uh, the background down then we're going to put the green screen photo on top of that background and then we're going to put the foreground overlay on top of that so we have a sandwich we have our picture sandwiched in between the two overlays it works really really well and I'm going to show you now how we can actually sandwich something using these overlays and show you how, uh, how much worth uh, they are to have in your uh, in your editing arsenal we'll call it so first of all what we have to pick out is we're gonna pick out a background so let's use uh, we're going to use this crystal ball okay now see here pay attention because this is BG that's background underscore red crystal ball now with every BG there is a corresponding FG. Look where it says FG underscore red crystal ball. Don't pick this one because that's different. It's the flower globe. You want the red crystal ball. Let's go back to our background. Select this. Right click on it and go ahead and open it up in our full editor. Here it is. Now the first thing we're going to do is the control zero. We're on the Mac it's command zero but now remember folks these are not written yet for the Mac I did talk to Ken he's close he's programming Mac folks out there so he's he's getting it ready for us and, and that's a great thing uh, Ken's a really good guy and he's a, a definitely a, a natural programmer uh, because he's writing for two totally different operating systems so that that's really great to hear from Ken alright so we have our background now we have to pick out our green screen person all right, let's go back into our organizer. And I know, folks, I, I only have these green screen pictures right now to work with. Uh, my wife was just telling me the other night that I need more subjects. So that's something i got to work on. And I thought we would grab one of these pictures. We're going to actually grab this picture. I'm going to right-click on it, and we're going to open that up in our full editor. Now, this is the same as using a regular background with the green screen. We're going to go through the same couple steps. So here we go. We're first going to do a select all. Now what I found to make this easier to get this to fit in here 
is I like to shrink it down a little bit here. So I'm going to do a control T and that's going to make it so I can transform it. Constrained proportions are up there. So if you just drag the top of this down, you can't make them fatter or skinnier because that's checked up there. So we're going to size that down first. Click the check mark. Now is when you want to click it and we're going to drag it and drop it on top of that crystal ball. And as you can see, it's still a little large, but that's okay. We're going to work with this and we're going to shrink this down a little bit more. Again, just shrink it down a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, here's the fun part. As I was talking to uh, Ken, actually, and getting some ideas of how this works, we don't have to worry about um, trying to fit all the green in there or anything because there's a sandwich overlay that goes over this. You don't even have to fit the whole person in there. Just fit the person, the part of the person you want in there. Now it's selected on the layer for the person. Now we're going to run our green screen wizard. Go to Filter, Green Screen Wizard, Three Layer System. And we'll try to get rid of this black down here a little bit. Here. Get rid of that. Move some more of the background. Move some more of the green. Maybe we'll set it to be transparent so I can see more what's going on down here. Okay. And you won't have this background issue either, folks. If your green screen is tight, you know, that's going to be something you have to worry about. Uh, making sure your green screen is tight. Um, making sure it's well lit. Um, when I shot these, it wasn't the best lighting. So that's why some of that's going like that. Uh, and then I just move these sliders around until I get the look that I want. Let's move this back around a little bit. Move it up more. Put more of the dark in there. I'll drop that down a little bit more. And you're just going to work that background out of there. There we go. Now, once you get it set up the way you like it, you can turn this back on if you wish. Okay, we can turn it off. It doesn't matter at that point. You can leave that set to transparent and run this as a transparency background so we can work with the lighting on it. But for this example, we're going to leave it turned off and we're just going to just do a regular overlay at this point. So let's click OK. Now at that point, what it did, it actually combined the two. It actually merged it down. It put our subjects in the crystal ball and it put the background layer in there. All right, now we have that point, that part of it. Let's go back to our organizer and now we need the FG red crystal ball. So that's why it's important for us to create these albums like this because watch how easy it is for me to find it. I click on my foreground OL for overlay, red crystal ball, I right click on it, we're gonna open up in the full editor. And here it is. Now we go to view, fit the screen, basically the same size. Now what we're going to do is we're going to overlay this onto this one. So we have to do a select all, and we're just going to drag it over and drop it on this one. Then just go ahead and line it up. That looks pretty good. We can go ahead and get rid of that. We actually clicked down there. Now you can see what happened was, see the bottom here where the where the people, you know, our subjects had some body parts down here. 
if I shut this off, you'll see it. You can see down here where the blue jeans and stuff are. But when you put this overlay or sandwich on top of the bottom layer, it puts them in the crystal ball. So there you go, folks. That's a sandwich overlay from Ken at Green Screen Wizard. You know, those are relatively cheap. I think I've seen on his website they are, uh, what are they here? $30 for the sandwich overlays. That's a small price to pay for uh, the kind of uh, product that you're producing with your pictures. It's really, really worth it. Uh, friends, don't forget to stop over to jackstechcorner.com and uh, pick up a copy of the DVD. You know, my videos are uh, high resolution on that DVD. There's 45 of them to get you rolling in Photoshop elements. It teaches you a lot of the basics and it gets you uh, uh, ready and motivated to do even more and more and more with Photoshop elements. So I hope you pick up a copy of that. By all means, stop over to Ken's website, greenscreenwizard.com. It's a uh, He's our sponsor for the show. I can't thank him enough for doing that. Uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. Talk to him on the phone. Um, so that's it. That's the sales pitches for both the companies. Uh, I hope to see you back here. Please subscribe to the YouTube videos if you're not already subscribed. And jump over to jackstechcorner.com. Click on the, our forms and go ahead and sign up for the web forms. Till next time, I'll see you back here very soon. Keep those uh, cameras, shutters clicking and keep those editors editing. Learn by doing and do it very often and, and you'll learn more and more about Photoshop elements. Don't get discouraged. A lot of people email me and say, Jack, I'm getting discouraged. I'm, I, I can't do this. You can do it. You know, I probably thought about that too back around uh, version one or two of Photoshop elements when I was getting into it. So you can do it. There's a lot of power in there. Have fun. I'll see you back here next time. Take care and bye for now.